Laura, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing awesome. Thanks for taking the time. First and foremost, how was the holiday season? Obviously, I guess the only bummer about this fight is it was sort of uh, sandwiched after the uh, the holiday season. But did you get yeah. to enjoy it? You know what? I mean, I, I did because, you know, I, you know, I was here the whole time, but I wasn't able to be with family. I had family who went with to Mexico and my boyfriend went to North Carolina for uh, Christmas. But I stayed here. You know, I enjoyed it. I'm just grateful I have a fight coming up. So I didn't really let it get in the way of anything. Yeah, and a big opportunity here for Invicta. Tell me how this all came together with you fighting for them. Well, I had signed with Invicta earlier this year, and because of the Ultimate Fighter, I wasn't allowed to take anything until the finale was over. And then after the finale finished with the Ultimate Fighter, I started looking for fights. And because I had a contract with them, they're my always my first option to go to. And it just so happened that like a fight in November didn't work out, and then this one came up, and it ended up working out. So that's how I hopped off the opportunity. Yeah. And how frustrating was that? Obviously you have to wait until the show sort of finishes and you have the, you know, obviously you want to get back in there and, and, and all that. Uh, was that difficult, even just from like a mental standpoint, not being able to fight? Um, I guess mentally it's only difficult because I'm so used to, you know, training to prepare for a fight, you know, with an opponent. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes athletes can get lost in, you know, not having a fight, you know, how do you train for, when you don't have a fight, you can't go as intense. But I kind of took it as a step back and was able to really focus on some skills that I needed to develop. And I think it was a blessing in disguise because I think I, maybe it's been seven months since I fought. I feel like I've just leveled up even more. So I'm like super excited for this fight because it took me a long time to get those skills ready. And I'm just excited to display them. How was the Ultimate Fighter season 30? How was that whole experience? Some people love it. They're like, put me back on. I love the whole thing. And others are like, yeah, kind of missed having TV and phone and all that stuff. Like, what, what, how was the experience for you? The experience was, um, was interesting. You know, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't go back on it, I guess. I wouldn't be like, put me back on. I mean, I did not thought that I missed TV and like other things. It was just, um, it was different, you know, like I learned a lot about myself and my character, you know, not having your coaches around, having to game plan like last minute, like finding out you're fighting, fighting last minute, you know, being able to be disciplined with your diet because no one, you know, you don't have your nutritionist there. You have to count your macros on your own on this like little notepad. But um, I mean, it was fun. I learned a lot about myself and what I'm able to accomplish and what I'm able to do and how to stay centered mentally. Were you able to watch the show back? I know some fighters don't like watching themselves on TV. No, I so honestly, I maybe watched two episodes, but I didn't watch any of the episodes. I think after watching the first one, um, I know that it's made for TV, but there were so many things that they left out, and it was cut in a way that, like, I feel like it could have been made more interesting too, because a lot of disputes went on, and they didn't show half of them. So um, it was hard for me to watch just the way they cut and edit things. And is there anyone on the show you still keep in touch with that you, you know, made like a lifelong friend or anything, Any, anyone you're still chatting with? Yeah, I'm still really good friends with Hannah and Juliana. So I, in the show, it didn't show that um, I ended up leaving my room and I was bunked with Helen and I took my mattress and the last two weeks I was just, you know, in their room on the floor. <laughs> just oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. But uh, becoming really good friends. And um, after the show, I went to Chicago to train with uh, Juliana and her team and Juju and Hannah came out and then Juju lives here. So I've seen her a, a couple times over in Huntington and yeah, it's been, I'm so grateful to have them. They, I came out with like two really good friends. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I know Hannah really well, even before uh, she was in Bellator, like and her getting that big upset. So it's cool that she's, she's one of the few fighters that has, you know, been in Bellator and then done the ultimate fighter and, and all this. So it's, uh, you know, qu quite the journey for her and she's in Victa now too, which is cool. Yeah. Right. So yeah, very exciting. Oh. There you go. All right, let's talk about your opponent, uh, Fatima Klein, uh, two and zero record. What do you know about her? How do you feel like you match up against her? I know she's two and zero. Um, I know that she's black belt in jiu jitsu, and that she's done a lot of like the Medusa grappling uh, tournaments. Um, I think I match up pretty well. I mean, I'm also a grappler. I'm also, you know, I wrestle. I'm. I feel comfortable getting taken down and being on the floor. Like, I feel comfortable on my feet now. So. I don't know. I feel like this is a good matchup stylistically. It's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and you mentioned leveling up, right? Having this time off and, and getting better. Uh, you sort of alluded to it there. Maybe the striking you've worked on a bit more. But what what is there anything you're looking to showcase in this fight or something you're really like happy that you've been able to progress over these last couple months? 
Yeah, definitely my striking. I feel like a lot of people know me as the wrestler of like, oh, she just wants to take you down. And I think I learned big time in my uh, semifinal fight in the Ultimate Fighter that, you know, I have hands and I can use them. And I don't always have to count on the takedown. Like yeah. I'm good on my feet and I'm confident, you know, that I have power in them too. So that's what I'm excited to showcase is like my hands, my work on my feet, like just also the overall evolution of the fighter, you know, not just having to concentrate on getting the takedown and getting, you know, holding them down. It's like, I want to be able to be fluid in the cage. So that's what I'm excited about. Who've been some of the main training partners this camp? Main training partners. Um, John. So I've been training with this kid named um, John DeBella. Uh, he's trains over. Canadian. I know John. Yeah. I know who John is. Yeah. You do? He's a. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've heard the name. Yeah. Yeah. So. I uh, asked him to be part of my training camp for the jiu-jitsu and um, the striking as well because he's a pretty tall, lanky guy. And he's been phenomenal. Like, um, I ended up getting a little cut in the beginning of camp and wasn't able to go hard, but um, or as hard as I wanted to, but he was just so good. Like, he was able to go hard without, like, hurting me or anything. And that's the only thing you can ask as a training partner is to, like, you know, keep the intensity at a certain pace and not get hurt. So he's been to my training camp. Um, big part also Alp Tekken, my coach. Um, great training partner. Like his mind, his spirit, his energy, like all throughout camp really helped me out. And then also um, Jesse Doyle, who's my uh, wrestling and jiu-jitsu coach and MMA coach. And yeah, so mostly mainly those three guys. Which oh, is great. Like, like it sounds like a very specialized camp, which is great. Like really focusing on you, which is good. I know sometimes fighters go to those bigger gyms, kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes, right? No, yeah, we, exactly. And I, I think I've been in this game long enough where I know how not to get lost in the shuffle. Where like yeah. immediately if you have a fight coming up, you ask the people you can trust if they can work on you, work with you one on one. So that way you have those people all throughout camp. Um, but I also got to shout out uh, my girl, Jerica. She's been helping me with my boxing and um, she's just been awesome too. Like, couldn't this camp she just made me so much better so yeah i mean able for all my training partners and i mentioned the holidays how's the weight cut going ahead of the fight it's actually going really good you know um like i said the the seven the month in the ultimate fighter and the seven months afterwards like not having to cut at all i think gave my body like a break you know also for the ultimate fighter i went up a weight class so I didn't really have to be cutting as hard as the other girls. And I think my body really thanked me for that and was like, oh, you can eat, <laughs> rest. Like you don't have to worry about like all these other things. So for this fight camp, I started pretty light and I'm doing pretty well and I'm eating really good. So yeah, it's been going good so far. And your corner, who will be in the cage with you that night? Uh, Jesse Doyle and Aptek and my coach. Nice. That's great. And uh, how do you see the fight playing out on January 18th? Um, well, obviously I see me winning, you know, I see me getting in some hard punches and, you know, I'm really working or looking for that knockout. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you just mentioned it there. You've obviously been working on that. So, uh, yeah, that would be a cool way to finish the fight. Um, th th this card being at the beginning of the year and this is your first fight of the year. Um, are you someone that like has goals or sets resolutions or anything like that? And if so, like, what, what do you, what are you hoping to achieve this year? Do you have uh, anything you'd, you'd be willing to share here? Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously my goal is to, you know, go into the UFC, you know, like I to be in a promotion that has these high level women, you know, like, and be able to fight against them. So that's my main goal. And then obviously I have like many goals to get to that. So I want to fight as much as possible this year. I want to win as much as possible. And my intention is just to keep growing as a fighter, you know, keep learning as a fighter. So whatever happens, just be able to integrate everything I've learned to become the best possible me. And, you know, being an Invicta, like you get the benefit of not only just, you know, having sort of that, I mean, you see so many Invicta fighters in the UFC, but a lot of the fighters that are successful in the UFC come from Invicta. I'm sure that's going to make you feel good that the matchmaking's on point, like you're getting those proper fights to, you know, get you to the UFC. I'm sure you sort of looked at it that way as well. For sure. I'm so grateful that I'm in Invicta. I mean, those women in the Invicta too are very high level and I get really good competition and grateful for Shannon that she just looks out for the women, you know, I uh, never really had the opportunity to talk to her um, on the phone like before. And then during this camp, I was able to talk to her and she's just really genuine person. And I'm really grateful that she's able to match us up and be in there with us. 
Talked all about fighting. What about uh, hobbies outside of fighting? I don't know what you get up to on your downtime. If you're watching any Netflix or you're going for any hikes or what, what do you like doing when you're not in the gym training or napping or, you know, yeah. all that other good stuff that comes with training camp, right? Um, yeah. So when I'm not in the gym fighting, I have my dog right here. Oh, love it. Love it. And um, I like to play with her. I like to take her out. We like to go on walks. I also like to read a lot. So I'm reading and I'm, you know, whatever I'm interested in, I like to study and I like to dabble in like Oracle cards and tarot cards. And Oh, cool. Okay. I like I, that stuff. A Reiki. <laughs> so sometimes I like to do Reiki. I mean, also very into psychedelics. So I like sitting in ceremonies, um, you know, very grateful to like plant medicine. So I do hoppe sometimes. Like I just... I do what I'm other, you know, I'm so interested in so many other facets of life that whatever intrigues me after, you know, training and stuff, I just kind of dabble in those. Have you ever tried ayahuasca? I did. Yeah, I, I have. What was it like? Cause I just hear like, it's so good for you. Like, uh, I mean, obviously you have to be with someone that can like supervise you and all that stuff, but uh, I just hear like, it's like life changing uh, taking that, especially for guys. Cause a lot of us have, you know, big egos as I'm sure you can understand. Yeah. Well, I think yeah, women and men have a lot of big egos, but I think men for some reason don't know how to vocalize or their emotions. So I think maybe that's what gets stuck, you know, in their energy. But ayahuasca was amazing. It was it was life changing, life transforming. Um, I think I went into the ceremony with this mindset of like, what is life? You know, like, and I'm, I always have like, a, I'm always like on this existential, like, little bridge of like, almost like, man, I just, you know, we're on this planet, we're floating, like, you know, I don't, you don't know if there is a God or if there isn't, you know, and I, and I didn't know. And then I went to the ceremony. And I feel like, all that changed where I finally understood that we're all connected and we're mm -hmm. all, and there's so much, you know, I had things going on with my family that it healed. And now I'm able to be in this space with my family with like no resentment, no nothing. It's just like, come as you are kind of thing. Yeah. And I have a very clear vision of me and what I believe and how I believe and I mean, there are so many things that went on in my ayahuasca ceremony, you know, and I can't like name them all. Uh, some mm -hmm. of them are personal, but it is life changing. I think when you're ready to make the step to kind of open your, uh, your, um, how you see things in life, you know, how your perspective on life, if you're ready for that to get changed, I would say go. Because, you know, afterwards you have to do the integration of what you've learned and you have to kind of accept it into your life. And, that can be hard, right? Like letting go of like beliefs that you once yeah. had. That's kind of very uncomfortable. But I say it's completely worth it. Um, and so I, I feel like ayahuasca is such a mother energy that it just, you know, they say that like when you take the sips, it like kind of finds out what's going on in your body and it works through you and whatever you need help on it just that's what you're going to get helped on. And I, I have so much faith in that medicine that yeah, I recommend it for sure. Obviously, with um, the p uh, people you trust, you know, like go with a shaman yeah. that you know, is accredited and an environment that you feel completely comfortable with. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. Do you think that's helped you as a fighter going through that? Yeah, I think it has. Um, like you said, in fighting, there's a lot of big egos. And I think taking that, just understanding that um, life is like meaningless and meaningful all at the same time. And when you lose or when you win, or even in the practice room, it's what you make of it and what you're willing to um, see out of it. So yeah, I feel like I'm able to let go of more stuff easily. And I'm also not as reactive and also just very thankful to feel like I love this sport so much and how it's created me as a person. And it's given me so many opportunities that like, you know, I used to do MMA with like this angry spirit, like, oh, and I thought I had to be angry. And now I'm just like, fuck, I'm so thankful. Like, I love this sport. You know, I love everything it offers me, both mind, body and spirit that like, I don't know where I would be if I wasn't doing it. Awesome. And we're looking forward to the next one. It's Invicta FC 51, January 18th. Uh, Laura, thanks so much for taking the time. If there's anyone you'd like to thank, any sponsors or any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm mostly on, uh, just Instagram as blessed Laura. Um, and as far as sponsors, Rev Gear has sponsored me with clothing. So thank you Rev Gear for, uh, hooking me up. And also 
I'm doing, um, no, and that's it. Just, uh, Rev Gear has been helping me out with like the clothing and stuff. 